let's talk about writing functions in the Python programming language. Now whenever you write a function, in, no matter what language you're using, you need to know five things. You need to know what's the purpose of this function, that is, what's it supposed to do. You need to come up with a name for the function. Uh, any function needs to have at least one input, and it needs to have a return type. Uh, you also need some kind of expression that's going to compute the actual return value that's uh, going to be given back to the program that's calling it. So let's, let's try it out here. Um, I'm in the Python shell, and I want to write a very simple function that is just going to take, it, take an input and then raise it to the power of 3. So it's going to cube it. So that's, that's the purpose of my function. So given a single number, I'm going to return the, the cube of that number. I can define a function right here in the shell. Let's, let's see how to do that. So I'm going to type define. Uh, here's the name of the function. I'll call it cube. It's going to take a single number x as input, and it's going to return x raised to the third power. So a couple things to note here. First of all, functions are defined using the word def, which stands for define. You give it a name, and inside parentheses you put uh, any inputs you're going to have. In this case, it's, it's one single number. I'll call it x. And then a colon. When you hit enter or return, it's going to indent for you. You're going to type in return and then an expression involving the input. Hit return or enter a couple more times and you'll get the prompt back, and that's how you know that a function is defined. So the way to use it is just type in the name of the function, and in parentheses, put in an input, like 3, the cube of 3 should be 27. Let's do the cube of 5, 125. Cube of 0 is, of course, 0, and 1 is 1. So there's our function. It's, it's defined. Now the problem is that if I were to close out the idle shell, I would lose the definition of that function. So I want to be able to save it into a file so that I can recall it later. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to open up a new window. And this is just a basic editor here. And I'm going to type in that same definition. But I want to include a few more things. Uh, first thing I want to do is put in a little bit of documentation that describes the purpose of the function so that when I come back to this later I'll, I'll know what it does. And I can also put in there some tests so that when the function is loaded it automatically runs those tests and make sure that everything's okay. So I'll start out with the definition and then I'm going to start this documentation thing and it's done with three quotation marks. Press enter and then go ahead and type in a, a little phrase describing what the function does. So I'll write uh, give in a number, return its cube. And then below that, we're going to put in uh, basically what you see right here, three greater than signs, some uh, use of the function, and then what it returns. So I'll put in the cube of 3 should return 27. The cube of 5 should return 125. Cube of 0 should return 0 and cube of 1 will return 1. And that's it for the documentation. Put in three quote signs and then you're done. And then type in the, the body of the function, which is return x to the third power. Now, in, in Python, indentation is, is key. Other programming languages use braces to indicate the beginning and ends of the functions. In Python, you use, use indentation. So the editor is helping us out. When we type in that colon and press return, it's going to indent it automatically. And then when we're all done with the definition, we hit enter a couple more times, and then the cursor pops back to the left-hand side over here. OK, so to, run the, to, to load these functions, all we got to do is just save this and, and tell it to load into the shell. But I want to include one last piece, and, and this is a piece to make the tests run when we load the functions. I've got it all ready to go on my clipboard, so I'll just paste it in. Basically, the way this works is it says that if the function is being loaded, that's what the main mean here means, then import a module called doctest, and then run test module with the verbose flag set to true. This will give us a nice report when the function runs. And then normalize white space tells it to ignore any extra white spaces that we might have in our, in our, uh, in our tests. So let's give this a try. We're going to save it. And I got to give it a name. Let's call this functions.py. It's important to put the extension on there. And then we're going to go run to run module. The window should switch, and we'll get back to our Python shell. 
we see this restart line, and then it runs our tests. And very briefly, it says it's trying cube of 3. We expect 27. OK. Cube of 5 is 125. That's OK. 0 is 0. And cube of 1 is 1. That's OK. So we ran four tests. They all passed. None of them failed. Let's try another function. Let's do one called squares. And the purpose of this function is that I'm going to give it two numbers. I'm going to give a, a beginning number and an ending number. And it's going to return a list of all the squares from the first number to the second number. So if, if I give it like 1 to 5, it should return the first five square numbers, like a 1, uh, what's that, 1, 4, uh, 9, 16, 25. So let's write that down here. So define, let's call this squares. And I'm going to give it two numbers, start and end. And I'll say, uh, given the starting and ending numbers, return a list of the squares from start to end, uh, more or less. That's basically what it does. So let's see, what's it supposed to do? Yeah. Uh, if I type in squares of, what did I say, 1 to 5, I should get back a list, and that's in brackets, of 1, uh, 4, 9, 16, and 25. And if I was to do squares of 2 to 4, I should get 4, 9, and 16. And maybe a couple more here. Squares of 0 to 1. That should give me 0 and 1. And how about one more? Squares of 0 to 2 should give me 0, 1, and 4. So if everything's working, that's what it's going to do. So it, it, it's a good idea uh, to kind of predict what you think is going to happen with a function so that you know you're writing the function to meet this specification. So here we go with the body. Uh, if you remember, this is how we do a list comprehension or, or list builder. We're going to say for I, I squared for I in range start to end plus 1. So keep in mind that when you do a range, it, it, it goes from the start, it goes up to, but not including the end. So I've got to add one to the end in order to get to go a little bit further. And then down here at the bottom is that that uh, stuff about the doc test that I did before. So we're going to save, run module, and you'll see it's going to run all those tests, including the ones we had before about the cube. And then here we go with the squares. So it looks like everything everything passed. That's great. So we ran four tests in cube, four tests in squares, and eight passed, zero failed. Uh, so I want to take a moment to show you what's it going to look like if the tests fail. Let's say um, I, I, I messed up here and I forgot to put that plus one on the on the end. So that, that should produce some errors because basically all of my tests are going to be wrong. So we'll run the module again. And here we go. Here's what it looks like when it fails. If we scroll up a little bit, we'll see that uh, it. we tried to do squares of 1 to 5. We expected 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, but got only 1, 4, 9, and 16. So that one failed. The next one down below also failed. This one failed. This one failed. So here we can see that we ran eight tests. Uh, excuse me. We ran four to uh, eight tests. Four of them passed. Four of them failed. And we can go back and find out where, in fact, they failed. So we'll put that back. And so the last function I want to write is one that's similar to squares, but it's going to now produce the list of, of cube numbers. So I'll call this cubes, and I'll give it a start and end a number. So uh, given a starting and ending number, uh, return the list of cubes from start to end roughly. There we go. So if I do cubes of, let's say, 0 to 1, I should get the list 0 and 1. And if I do cubes of, uh, let's do 0 to 3, I should get 0, 1, uh, let's see, 2 to the third is 8, and 3 to the third is 27. 
And how about if I do cubes from 10 to 12? Ooh, let's see. That should give us like 10 to the third is 1,000. Uh, 11 to the third, I'm not sure what that is, so I'll bring in my calculator here. So 11 to the third is 1331. And then, um, let's see, 12 to the third is 1728. 1728. And then now the body here, return a cube of i for i in range start to end plus one. So notice here that I, I'm making use of the function that I wrote. I already wrote the cube function. That's up here. I'll just make a use of it in my list builder. So let's save and run and hey everything looks good uh, four tests in cube ran three tests in uh, cubes four tests in squares man they all pass so everything looks great so that's the basics of writing a function in python so just to recap you want to create a new file by going new window type in the definition of the function along with the name inputs and then in triple quotes you write down a brief little description of what it does and then some tests, which says that if I'm going to run this function with a certain input, I expect a certain result to come back. And you can do that for numbers, you can do it for lists, you can do it for strings. Pretty much anything is going to return. And then put this last little bit at the very end, which tells it to run the test. Now I'm going to copy and paste this, these three lines into the description of this video, so you can just uh, get it right off of the web page and put it into your Python definition file. So there you go. Give it a try yourself and uh, watch for my other videos about writing functions in Python. Thanks for watching.